right, so I've restarted the recording here. We are actually in the middle of a drilling run. Uh, this is fresh from a reload. Uh, Clang is not happy with my walking pistons. Uh, snapped the, the clamps off the piston head off on this side. And uh, then snapped the entire rail off on this side and fell down to the bottom of the hole. Uh, a few minutes into the, the last effort to record this. So I just reloaded and we're going to start from here. Hopefully it'll go better this time. I've gotten it down to the bottom. I've gotten it up to the top. I've done it two or three times in a row without interrupting it. Uh, but sometimes it just isn't happy and decides not to do it for me. Uh, Kozaki, who recorded the original video that inspired this creation, did not seem to have near as much trouble with the, the walking pistons. So I don't know if my settings are different. Um, obviously you can change a, a number of settings on these pistons. Um, in regard to their uh, force, the maximum impulse on the axis and the non-axis, my non-axis force is now very high. Uh, the default is 50 kilonewtons when you first load them in. Um, my axis impulse is 50 mega newtons. My non-axis is 50 giga newtons. This is supposed to keep the pistons from jiggling back and forth, like wobbling around. And this is how hard they're pushing up and down. Um, so yeah, I don't know what, what the settings are in, in Kazaki's build, but these are what mine are. They're very high. Uh, they seem to work better than the alternatives, um, especially the, the the axis impulse uh, it basically needs to be about that high to maintain speed um, otherwise it, it just can't pull the thing up on its way back up um, at, at any sort of decent rate um, you can see on the bottom here my speed meters got me at 0 0.3 0 0.35 meters per second even though the the pistons settings are at 0 0.5 meters per second you know at, on the way down but we're not actually drilling anything on the way up but that speed's pretty consistent so I'm not sure exactly why that is but that's pretty consistent it does actually say 0 0.05 when it's supposed to when we're down at the bottom mining um, anyway point is, is that that axis force is, is about what I need it to be uh, the non-axis force I've been messing around with a little bit I can't really find a, a sweet spot there are definitely places where uh, you know it, it's it grinds on the side like if it gets bound up it's binding it's not uh, allowing the pistons to move at all and then there are times where it it does this temptation of clang and sometimes eventually actually snaps the head off like it did on my my previous recording attempt here um, so yeah I, I don't know what those settings are supposed to be if anybody has any suggestions I'm open to them um, in Kazaki's video, they, they didn't even have the the guide gears on the sides here. Uh, now they only ran through, you know, one trip down, one trip up, and I don't think the hole was quite this deep, so, you know, maybe just got lucky there. Um, I have not been lucky. <laughs> you know, relatively, it, it's, it, like I said, it, it, it works relatively well. There's definitely plenty of occasions where I can go all the way down and come all the way back up but I, I wouldn't call this survival ready based on the fact that it is all too happy to just snap off and fall down to the bottom entirely and then you basically have to rebuild the whole thing because it, it's it would be very difficult to to bring a ship down here or something and, and drag this thing back up and, and get it clamped back onto the rails at a higher point and you know the damage that it would suffer trying to do that or from the initial fall in the first place yeah I, I wouldn't recommend that route anyway we're almost down here by the time we do finally get all the way down we don't last very long I mean you can see we've only got like 1.82 percent of our cargo full here we've been picking up you know less than less than five liters per tick because we haven't actually slowed down to do any mining um, per se it's you know drills are running but we're technically in waiting mode here. If you watch the code review episodes, you'll know the difference. Uh, basically amounts to how fast the pistons move. They slow down to you know one-tenth of their speed when we get more than five liters per tick in dig mode there as opposed to expansion mode. And we haven't done that. So we're making pretty good time on our way down. 
uh, only picked up about 2% now of our cargo load, but when we do hit the bottom here, um, which is fast approaching, um, we will fill up very quickly. Uh, I've seen this go as high as about 180, 185 liters per tick now. Um, so yeah, we get, we get a pretty good amount of stone pulled in here pretty quickly. Well, looks like we're stuck. They cleared it up. All right. Yet yeah, sometimes what happens is that, you know, the reason for those safety checks that we have in the in the code. There we go. We hit mining, just briefly. Now we're back to waiting. Scraped a extra little bit of ore off the side, I guess, or stone off the side. Not quite all the way down at the bottom. Um, but anyway, uh, you can see we're kind of jerking back up and down here a little bit. That's because uh, we're misaligned enough that these gear are not actually ready to lock on the the guide rails and so when the code tries to lock them it's not able to uh, because of those safety checks rather than just unlocking the other one it keeps it locked and continues so it ends up kind of bouncing up and down a little bit and usually just the the bouncing up and down once or twice is enough to get it realigned well enough that it's able to lock uh, doesn't always work but you know usually and then again, you know, sometimes it does like it did. Last time I tried to record this, and just snaps the head of the piston off, snaps the guide rail off, and ends up at the bottom of the hole. But our ore collection rate slowed down again a little bit, so we're we're moving relatively quickly. Only another few meters here before we're actually digging up against the bottom. There's a little bounce. There we have a clear. You saw over there where we weren't quite aligned. It was white, so it wasn't ready to lock. And there we're not ready to lock again. Now we're ready to lock. Now we're mining. No, no, we're not mining. This is... I'm not sure what that was. Why we're going so slow there? Yeah, we're having some some issues. There we go. Yeah, you can see on the horizon indicator there, we're just ever so slightly rotated around that Z-axis. So that is that is not right. We're not supposed to be rotated like that. In theory, uh, you know, we should be perfectly level since we're perfectly level at the top based on the alignment from those merge blocks. But it doesn't always work out that way. Now it looks like we're almost down low enough to be scraping the bottom, but we're still really just going around the edges here. So, yeah, a little bit of jerkiness there. In terms of collecting enough for slowing down, and then not collecting enough for and speeding back up again. But you can tell when we're actually on the bottom, because all those drills will be kicking up dust. Speed back up. Jerking up and down. When we get to the bottom, you'll know it because that rate will shoot up. Even tens, relatively low. There we go. Twenty. Twenty-three. 30, 34, 44, 50. Slow down a little bit there. 4, 60, 65, 88, 103. There we go. Now we're starting to bite in. Given how fast that rotor's going at six ro uh, rotations per minute, we're probably actually moving a little too slow here, and that's why you kind of have the step, the stuttering, the, the up and down here, because the the rotor starts to spin around again, and it hasn't moved down far enough to kind of catch up with the rock. Still 138, 157, 170. Five percent full. We 
we are ourselves in the seat here, 283 meters down, the bottom of the drills, the bottom of the holes a little bit further. All right, we're starting to slow down. With the amount of cargo that we've got, the actual cargo container here is full. Drill overflow container here, you can see that that is full completely. The connector is full completely. So at this point, we're just filling up the drills. And uh, some of them here are close enough to full that they're not pulling anymore. So that's why our, our rate's starting to slow back down. But this is going for 100,000 liters short of completely capped off. Just so there's a little bit of a margin of safety there. So we'll, we'll start heading back up at about 916,000 liters. It's about 90%. And we'll scrape a little bit more on, off the sides on our way up, but... Not too bad. Based on the distance between the, the clamps and the grinders or the welders, we do have a little bit of room to kind of bounce without it, you know, falling off of the, the rail. And usually it will work itself out. Sometimes I have to explicitly reverse it and then we'll start, you know, rebuilding or, or pulling up the rail depending on which direction we reverse to. Uh, you know, do that for a couple of steps and then reverse it again. Then usually. Uh, works the kinks out. It's a, a relatively rare event that it, it falls anymore. But it still happens. We have actually leveled off, if you see from the horizon indicator, we don't have that tilt anymore, that slight roll. I even have gyros on the bottom of here, try to keep it stable, but it doesn't really seem to help. I'm thinking about maybe trying to put something in the code to, to sense the direction of the connector up on the top and use the override on the the gyros to try to fix it, but I'm not even sure that two gyros has enough torque to twist this thing, especially if it's got these rails in the way. I mean, if you look down at the, the lower right there, we're almost 3 million kilograms, with all of the, the ore especially, or the stone. Quite a bit of weight to try to rotate. 225 meters on the way back up. 90.5% full. 920,000 liters of stone. A little bit of ice thrown in there. Scraped off the side on our way down. You can see we're actually picking up zero liters per tick now. We've gone up and down this particular section quite a few times, so I'm not surprised that there's nothing left to scrape off the sides. Usually if we're scraping something off the side at this point, it's because we're crooked. vanilla 
if it wasn't one of the first mods I'd install would be to change up the cameras a little bit so I didn't need a rotor to pan it and it didn't have all that blue fuzz on it. smoothly on the way down. I can assure you. Guide gears have been a great deal of help, otherwise I'd be worried that maybe if I'd have left it buried in the side of the hole, the guide rail buried in the side of the hole, that might have been better for stability there since the rail just broke off entirely the last time it fell. I feel like it would have been less inclined to do that if it was buried in a meter of rock. if this thing worked correctly though because then it wouldn't need to be supervised you could just start it and fly off and do something else it does have a remote control block on it though and it has also got an antenna it's actually a small grid antenna on a rotor, but because it's attached to a large grid, ultimately, it does have a full 50 kilometer radius. So it can be monitored remotely through the cameras and uh, accessing the status information from the control manager's output. But since it still likes to fall down, at the end of the day, it needs to be monitored. So after this video. I probably will continue to occasionally load back into this world and make improvements on this thing as they occur to me or as suggestions theoretically come into the comments from all of the approximately no viewers that I currently have. But other than that, I think I am going to restart a survival game. I have one going, uh, got into space, hanging out on an asteroid with a small base there. But uh, I think I will start over and make it a Let's Play, since we're doing recordings now. Uh, probably go ahead and start off on the Earth-like planet, just for simplicity. Anybody would like to see any other games, let me know. So, hopefully, 
possibly it would be a game I actually want to play, but I'm pretty open-minded to at least try something once. Almost there. Monstrosity. Extend the locking clamps, retract the walking pistons, and we locked, and it was real quick, you probably didn't even see it, I barely even saw it, it did disconnect everything and, and then reconnect everything after those merge blocks locked into place, just to try to reset the alignment, but we were mostly on, on point there on the way up better than on the way down anyway we are unloading pulling off about 25 to 50 liters per tick uh, but we're also on hold so once it's done unloading it'll just stay here anyway that's it that's all I've got to show you for the up and the down let me know what you thought hope you enjoyed it hope you found it interesting inspirational whatever uh, props to Kazaki for the original idea uh, welcome any suggestions for improvements and any suggestions for any other game you want to see Stay tuned check back subscribe whatever so if you can see the uh, let's play when I start it If you're into that sort of thing Thanks for watching